Kellyanne, thank you so much. I want to start off by something that's soft and nice and appropriate. I love the fact that the new president met with all those labor leaders. I love the yes. fact he met with construction trades guys, not public employees and all that stuff, but guys and, and women, I guess, who are going to build this new America. Whose idea was that, and is he going to keep doing it? That was the president's idea, Chris. I was thrilled to be a part of that meeting and the subsequent picture-taking session in the Oval Office where he asked those labor union leaders and workers, how many of you have been in the Oval Office before, the White House? And only three hands went up. I thought that itself was remarkable because we're always told, Chris, that these labor union heads and the workers that you and I grew up with in Pennsylvania and in New Jersey, that they're Democrats. They should be here with the Democratic yeah. president. Donald Trump looks at them as people who are literally building our nation back up and revitalizing it. And it was a fabulous, far-reaching meeting, very mutually respectful. They talked about job creation. They talked about it was the carpenters, the pipe fitters, the iron workers, the plumbers. Really just very exciting to have them here. And it was on the same day that earlier in the day he had manufacturing CEOs in the White House to also discuss with them how to reinvigorate American manufacturing, keep those factories and their workers here in the U.S., which, of course, you see is already happening. Well, that's great because we had Terry O'Sullivan over here last night, and we had Mark McKenna on too. We had a couple. Of, one of them is a Shin Fen guy. Anyway, let's talk about let's talk about the wall. Is just the specifications, the specs. Is this going to be wall to wall? Is this going to cover the 2,000 mile border? Is it going to be a this full is going wall? To be, yes, the executive order today that was signed is for a physical wall to be constructed on the southern border. I assume those who are tasked with the actual construction, Chris, will decide what materials are used. But this is his chief center campaign promise of many months. And, and at the same time, let's, let's make clear what this does. This executive order also expands the detention space for those illegal immigrants who are caught trying to cross over the wall. We just have to stop this incessant flow of people and of drugs across our border. It also allows additional tools and resources for our agents on that wall. And who are working along the wall, border, border security, and, and our law enforcement officers who are yeah. doing their best, often in very difficult and dangerous circumstances, Chris, to comply with the law. So it is building the wall, but it also allows the tools that we need to make the wall real. We are a sovereign nation. We've been spending billions of dollars protecting other nations, walls and borders. It's time we do the same for our country. Let's talk about, as they say in football, the secondary. What are you going to have be, for those who do get through the wall? The people come by boat, plane, whatever, they overstay their visas. Is, is the Trump plan ultimately going to include a feature that says no more illegal hiring of people who come here desperately, willing to work for nothing practically? Is there going to be some feature to, to stop that? Well, the president has said, and he on a different network is giving an interview tonight where he says he's going to take a look at that. The first and foremost, those many people who are here illegally and are, are criminals, they're out of here. There, sure. there is no consideration. Um, so you have to start there. I think it's a very important place for all of us to start. Um, he also has talked about the fact that he is putting the American worker first. So whether it's meeting with the, literally meeting with the American worker, those labor unions and manufacturing CEOs, Chris, or in the case of his immigration policy, saying that this, this nonsense of a lot of the billionaire elitists love to say, that illegal immigrants are here to do the jobs that Americans just won't do. We've heard from so many Americans, Chris, saying, I would do those jobs, well, but you have to allow me to fairly compete for those jobs. They're not going to take $5 okay. an hour under the table. How do you stop people, big shot businessmen, from hiring cheap illegal labor? Is there going to be something in the, in the Trump? Nobody's doing it right now. It's not happening. Business doesn't get away with it. Some guy is running a, a restaurant in Chicago. He's in charge of immigration right now. He'll call up somebody and say, get up here. I need a dishwasher and pay him nothing. You know how it works. And, and I'm started, asking, is Trump going to stop that? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Instead of raising the number of illegal immigrants who do the jobs, like the restaurant jobs you just described, Chris, why don't we raise the pay? That's what these uh, employers well, that, should do to attract minimum wage? Well, That's what they should do. Well, they should, they should make it more competitive in their own places of business for, to attract and retain American talent. By the way, okay. if you are a legal immigrant, and you, you have every, you're going to compete with American workers for those same jobs. But it, I agree with you completely if what I hear you saying that it's time for us to also hold accountable these employers who are violating the law. You know, the conversation before Donald Trump came along about fairness was always what's fair to the illegal immigrant. The question now is what's fair to the American worker, but also what is fair for us to ask of employers? Are they just meant to sign up for E-Verify, enroll in that program, and wash their hands clean? 
of never having to verify people's credentials or pay what's fair and let yeah. that American worker compete for those jobs. The other thing I just wanted to throw in there, because you and I would relate to this given our backgrounds, this president also has committed himself to expanding educational, vocational, technical opportunities. That's huge. Because not everybody is college material, and not everybody should run to a four-year yeah. college and be faced with a mountain of debt and very few job prospects. Go and get a skill certificate while you're in high school. Go and become a plumber, a welder, a carpenter, and then you will have those jobs waiting for you yeah. in this country. Let's talk about voter fraud, and, and there's two issues here. Let's talk about the, there's the, the, the general problem, if there is one, and there's always some irregularities. We hear about irregularities once in a while. But this idea of three to five million people in this country illegally voting, I've just looked at the math. There's 11 million people in this country illegally. That's wrong. But there are only about 10 of them who are voting age. So that means that if five million people voted illegally from the country, who aren't even have a right to be in this country, that meant that half the people in this country illegally of voting age voted. That's as high a percentage, Kellyanne, as people here legally voting. The numbers are just so far out of imagination. Five million people came into this country legally and voted. Boy, they must be patriotic to want to vote, but the numbers don't add up, do they, to you? Well, it's not just that. It's people do you, who are do you think those the registration rules. The way you describe them is very different than the way the president is looking at them in this regard. He is talking about the integrity of the process. He's talking no. about... No, no, he is. Please, I've discussed this with him. Let me speak. He, he is talking, Chris, about one person, one vote integrity. And he wants to make sure that in our registration process, people who don't qualify to be registered, who registered and they're illegally, who are dead and should have been purged from the rolls a long time sure. ago. Are we going to dispute People die all the time. That's right. why those lists have to be re-scrubbed re all the time. Right. They die, but let me but ask the you about the illegal immigrant thing. Them. He spent the weekend, or poor, poor Spicer's doing a good job, I think. Certainly he Sean's a doing a great job. job. And he's out there saying, he, he's being asked by Jeff Zeleny, you know, a Politico, uh, do you believe the president? I mean, everybody's getting forced to this truth test. Do you believe three to five million people voted, came out of the, into the country illegally and voted? I think these numbers are very hard to defend. Chris, this is why the president today called for an investigation. And I really credit him for doing that because people constantly, okay. in politics okay. and on TV, constantly say things and have no, no backup, no forward-thinking measure no. to either prove them and, and he has called for an investigation, so let that take hold. Tomorrow at the retreat in our hometown of Philadelphia, the House Good and Senate you. Republican retreat, where the president is going to address them, he's going to talk a little bit further about the mechanisms he wants to put in place to at least investigate in the integrity of our okay. elections. Good luck at the retreat, and uh, good luck with Sean Spicer and the whole new operation. I think we need uh, effective job. communication, and, and, and you're a good you. part of it. Kellyanne, we're going to disagree about that three to five million number because it doesn't square with the number of people here All illegally. All I'm saying yeah. is the president, should, should the president wants an investigation, we should have well, an investigation. Well, let's find out if when there's, going no, wrong. when there's no election imminent, look, the guy won fairly and squarely. Chris, there's no trophy, no blue ribbon for winning the popular vote. I think we found that out. All the all the all the graphics on MSNBC said I know. road to two seventy. So he won okay. he won big and three hundred and six you know. I'm with I'm with you on that because you know what we don't count uh, hits in baseball, we count runs. Thank you we very much, runs. Kellyanne Thank Conway. You. Take care. Up next we'll get reaction to what we heard tonight from Kellyanne Conway. The Hardball Roundtable is coming here next and you're watching the Hardball right now where the action is.